What's up, everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. Today, I have a very special guest. She's going to tell us about the field of pediatrics, uh, why she went into it, and also some tips for everyone else out there. Dr. Tilford, uh, welcome uh, tonight, and uh, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everyone who you are, kind of what you do. Uh Awesome. My name is Dr. Catricia Tilford, and I am a board-certified pediatrician, I'm also fellowship trained in urgent care pediatric medicine. Um, I am currently doing general pediatrics as well as um, pediatric telemedicine, um, and just formerly I was doing pediatric urgent care, fast track ER. Gotcha. Um, and going back to med school, like third or fourth year of, med, year of med school, when everyone kind of chooses a specialty, what was it about pediatrics uh, that got you interested in it? Actually, I have a very non-traditional route. Um, I didn't do a typical um, four-year medical school. I actually went to medical school right out of high school um, in a combined program. So I did um, a six-year BAMD um, accelerated program. And so essentially, like we had a lot more clinical experience, like you really from year one, which is would be a traditional, I guess, year one undergrad. Um, and I actually chose psychiatry first. So I finished med school. I started a residency in Augusta, Georgia, and actually did two years of psychiatry with the intentions to do child psychiatry. Um, and then I just was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I missed my first love, which is peds. And yeah. so I switched. I was able to stay at the same institution um, and did a different residency, pediatrics, and accelerated through that since I had some credit already under my belt um, and was able to complete that. But essentially going to medical school, it was always wanting to work with kids. It's just I changed that. Uh, venue of how I would do it. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I, I haven't met a lot of people who did the accelerated path of med school and college. Uh, so you graduated from med school. Uh, how old were you when you graduated from med school? 23. Holy crap, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think there was one person in my class in med school who was, uh, maybe she was 24. That was probably, yeah, so that, you were really young. Um, how was that kind of um, combined program, getting your bachelor's at the same time as getting your MD degree, how was that? Um, strenuous, like, uh, you know, starting, I, my dad reminds me, like, I think I literally graduated high school on a Thursday and started med school, like, the following Monday. Like, Holy it's your <laughs> rounds, like, yeah. it's 20 credit hours, really no summer breaks. Um, but I think the advantage of it was really getting the exposure of being on the words, like from day one, it wasn't, Oh, I'm just in the books. I'm in the books. Like you actually could see light at your, t at the end of your tunnel. Um, but it's not for everybody. Like you have to, you mature very fast, yeah. obviously, you know, going into that type of program, they're taking the cream of the crop from high school. And you know, that first semester you're like, Oh, I could do this. I got this. And then you're like, wait a minute. I'm not as smart as I thought I was. So yeah. really buckle down hard and, and just, it's about delayed gratification, essentially, and a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. So you, you basically have to already know, coming out of high school, that medicine is something that you want to do. Uh, what were the requirements for that program? I'm pretty sure you had to be at the top of your class in high school and also yes. take the MCAT as well. No, I did not. So that was definitely an advantage. Actually, um, the school that I went to in Kansas City is one of the first um, combined um, medical programs and actually one of the fewer ones that are still six years. Now you see more of the seven, eight year tracks where you're doing like MD, um, MPHs or MD, MBAs. Um, and some of those aren't guaranteed admissions into the medical school. So you still may have to take an MCAT. But for myself, I didn't. So they just looked at my ACT scores, like extracurricular wow. activities, you know, what I was doing in the community um, I think I did like maybe a placement test during my interview um, just to kind of see like where I was and my strengths as far as chemistry and if I needed to take like some kind of um, remedial type of classes before starting like the first semester gotcha uh, so you got your your medical doctor degree then you went into psychiatry um, yes. and how did you transition into pediatrics was that because um, a lot of people don't talk about that as well you go into a specialty um, and then you, most people stick with that specialty, but was that a hard transition to tell your program, like, hey, I want to do something else? 
you're right um especially being like an intern like i already felt it in my spirit that like maybe this wasn't what i wanted to do ultimately you know because to do psychiatry general psychiatry it's four years if you want a fellowship in psychiatry you do three and then you can go into your fellowship if you're going to do certain fellowships like child so, so a, a total of five um but if you're wanting to do other things like ad addiction psychiatry or forensics or something like you do the four plus your extra year so within that first year I didn't have any mentors which is so important you know being an intern um, being a resident like in having someone in your program that you can trust and confide in who's not just gonna look out for the benefit of their program but for what your long-term goals are and I didn't have that I remember having a chief resident where they allowed him to take like a year off do some research like they kind of like worked with his schedule and I thought hmm that's interesting because in psychiatry, just like uh, maybe radiology or other specialties, you know, your first year of prelim, you still do a lot of medicine. You're not focused yet. And so I was rotating in peds and I rotated in internal medicine and my attendings were looking at me like, you're really good. Like, um, why are you doing internal medicine? Why are you doing pediatrics? You know, unfortunately, psychiatry kind of has this stereotypical kind of taboo of like, oh, you're not smart enough to be a real doctor. And that's why people go into psych. But obviously, that's not why I was choosing psychiatry. But to see other um, specialties, um, look at my strengths and say, maybe you should be doing a dual um, medicine program, which they do exist, psychiatry and emergency medicine or psychiatry and family medicine. So I went back to my director and said, can I do something like this? And they're like, no. And so I spent another year, still no mentor. And then finally, halfway through my second year, a mentor came and I was like, I don't think this is for me. And she's like, you're right. And so I approached the program director at Peds. I was like, I know you don't know me, but you know, I got those attendings who remembered me from working in Peds and asked them to write letters on my behalf. And just by the look of the draw, like that match season, because um, I didn't have the time to go back through match. I didn't have the time to like, I'm still doing psychiatry rotations and studying for step three. And so they interviewed me like, and they, all the people that they mom, she was like, I don't have a spot, can guarantee, but she still interviewed me. And I think they called me the day after match and said, we didn't fill all of our spots. Are you still interested? And I was like, wow. I am. <laughs> Yeah, so one day you were a psychiatry resident, the next day you were a pedi pedi pediatric resident. Wow. Exactly, yeah. yeah so you, you got through your pediatric residency and then you, you took your board, you're board certified pediatrician. Uh, what is a typical day for you? It kind of starts at what time and ends? How, how do your days as you look? Yeah, totally understandable. Well, it depends on the scope of practice um, with peds, where generally they can vary. Like for me, I'm right now doing general pediatrics, which I just transitioned back into. Well, I shouldn't say back into. I've never done general pediatrics prior to this year. So my typical day right now is kind of like an eight to five, eight to four. Um, I'm seeing the scope of anywhere from a, a newborn physical all the way to like a, someone preparing to go to college and needing a sports physical or college age students. Um, so sick visits, um, well child checks, getting people ready to go back to school, getting them caught up on their shots, talking to moms who are concerned about um, why their child is not eating, how to potty train their child, like a, a scope of things. Um, prior to that, I was doing urgent care, fast track ER, and so those hours varied. It's a lot of shift work, um, a lot of procedures, hands on, kind of a hustle and bustle. This is the sickest patient, let's focus on them first. While in the other room, I'm looking at an ear infection, and in the other room, I'm waiting for the anesthetic to kick in so I can suture them up really quick. So um, it's a, a, a different spectrum, or um, but I, I like both. Got you. Uh, so to become a pediatrician, it requires, you know, med school completion, which m most people was four years. You're a little bit the uh, abnormal person. Yeah. Um, and then three years of uh, residency. Yes. For a pediatrician. And what type of fellowships can you do after that? What, what are some options? Um, so pediatrics is similar to internal medicine. We just focus on the child. And so when it comes to specialties, you can do pediatric cardiology, you could do um, pediatric infectious disease, pediatric rheumatology, um, pediatric emergency medicine. For myself, most of those fellowships in pediatrics are going to be 
uh, another three years. Um, so even when it comes to um, wanting to do pediatric, um, uh, being a neonatologist, I should say rather, like doing um, a NICU fellowship, a PICU fellowship, those are three years. Um, but for myself, what I decided was, since I already did two years of psych and I did three years of peds, I really liked ER. And I know that there are ERs where you can work as a general pediatrician. I just wanted a little more experience under my belt. So I went to New York and did a unique um, urgent care fellowship program that was pediatric specific. And that was only one year. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and then after you complete your fellowship, uh, and I know it varies by location and where you end up, how much can a pediatrician uh, expect to make? Pediatric, the specialty for pediatrics, is pretty low on the totem pole for all the other specialties. But as you mentioned, yes, geographic role definitely, uh, or just excuse me, geographic region makes a huge difference, as well as um, has to do with if you specialized or not, in addition to if you're in academics or private practice or um, if you're working in a group setting. Um, but pretty much average wise, like um, 160s to 180s, you're doing really good if you're above 200. Gotcha. Uh, what do you have to say for the people who, um, you know, med school is so expensive these days. I looked at my medical school tuition. I went on a website. And it was almost $100,000 per year. That was at Georgetown. Uh, so if you come out of med school with $400,000, $500,000 in debt, and then you're interested in a specialty that doesn't pay well, what do you have to say for those people who may be passionate about pediatrics, but they're concerned about paying back those loans? That's a great question. Um, you have to remember what was the reason for going into medical school? Like, what is, what's your passion? Like, if, if this is your purpose, like, you have to remember the art of medicine and that that is what is your motivate, what motivates you every day to wake up is that you're there for your patients and you're making a difference, especially in peds, because we have the opportunity to make an impact, you know, and change someone's life. Like, I, when you talk to a lot of people, they just say, why did you decide to go in medical school? Well, it was a doctor that I had when I was younger, you know? Like, in fact, I have patients today that said, you know, I usually ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to be a pediatrician is what she said. So the fact that you could be that model for somebody um, that you're making a difference, not in just your patient's life, but the whole family, you know, in pediatrics, I'm not the mom's physician, but essentially like I'm practicing for the whole family. So it's really about making a difference. Um, nowadays with um, being a physician, you know, we're being taught a lot more in regards to like business aspects. So I would say, Hey, don't just work for your hospital. Don't just work for your clinic. Like, be an entrepreneur, you know, like there are other ways to have multiple streams of revenue so that that debt can be paid down. Awesome. Um, what type of advice would you give to people who are interested in medicine in general or pediatrics as well? What kind of advice would you give them? Um, remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> you're going to have some bad days. You're going to have some great days. You're going to have some days that you think, is this really what I want? But I think if you know um, from the beginning what your goals are and you get you a team that supports you, whether that be um, your a spiritual connection, your family, um, medical school friends, and you have a good circle, then you'll make it. Um, you just have to remember in the long run that it ultimately, like, it's not about the money. It's not about having a prestige title, but it's really about having a passion um, and being able to use that with the gifts that you have and the knowledge that you have to make a difference. Awesome. Um, I asked this three last questions or all of my guests, so uh, you can give it one or two word answer. Um, what is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? Be at the beach. Be at the beach. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> what, do you have a favorite <laughs> beach the location? Um, I don't think I have a favorite beach, uh, living in Miami, like Miami? wherever, yeah. wherever I can park my car, I'm going to go. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, what is your uh, favorite food? My favorite food? I love tacos. Tacos. Okay. Good yeah. choice. Good choice. Um, and is there a particular interest that you have in pediatrics, like a condition or uh, something in pediatrics that kind of draws you? What, what's something? Um, I, I think what I like a lot is actually um, – a first time parents and like newborns, you know, it's a, my, one of my favorite quotes to tell them is that they don't come with books. Like, and even though there are books about babies, they don't follow the books. Like even as a new mom myself, I'm just like, 
oh my God, I remember reading about this in school. Like, why are you not acting like how you're supposed to act at four months? Yeah. But yes, giving them that extra pep talk to let them know you're doing a good job. It is okay. You know, like, I think that's what I like the most. Be able to spend that extra time to let mom know, yes, it is normal for them to cry this long. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Dr. Tipper, thank you so much for uh, joining me tonight. Um, you're a real inspiration to a lot of us out here. And um, if anyone wants to contact you, um, if you have a website or any email you would like to provide. Oh, most definitely. Um, I am on Instagram as Dr. Mom underscore Sweet Sage, same um, handle um, on Twitter. And I have a professional Facebook page, which is my first name, um, Catricia, last name Silford. Awesome. So I'll put the links in the description to those, uh, to your links of your uh, Instagram and your Twitter and your website and all that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Tupper, for uh, joining me today. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Dr. Webb. No problem. Everyone else, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. We'll see you next time.